You mean I can't eat whatever I want? Not if you have allergies. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari. I help my clients solve their immune inflammation and digestive dysfunction using the mind-gut immunity method. This clinical approach has helped thousands of patients resolve their symptoms, some in as little as six weeks without the need for complex or costly interventions. In this video, I'll show you exactly what foods to avoid for allergies to start reversing inflammation fast. I'll review some scientific research and go in depth on how my patients optimize their diets to resolve their symptoms. This material you're about to watch is taken straight out of my MindGut Immunity Academy where people just like you learn how to beat their allergy symptoms for good, even when the diagnosis is unclear. Let me just say this, everyone is different and in order to truly know what your body can and cannot tolerate, it's helpful to keep a food journal. Monitoring food intake and symptoms is very important for tracking the severity of allergies. You can even use apps now like Kara and MyFitnessPal to see your progress over time. In my practice, having done this several years, several foods keep popping up as triggers in my clients. And I wanna share some of these with you so that you can be aware. We'll be discussing four specific food groups which can trigger immune inflammation in conditions such as allergies. I'm gonna show you what to look out for and what to avoid. In addition, I'm gonna give you some very useful tips on incorporating digestive enzymes and how to plan your approach for addressing allergy inflammation. Now, before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. These are must-see videos for anyone with allergies looking to reverse their symptoms for good. And it's helpful information that you probably won't get anywhere else. Now, onto the topic of problematic foods in allergies. The mistake I see most people make is they think they can just eat anything and hope that their allergy symptoms will just go away. But frequently, that's just not the case. Typically, there's a food that's triggering an immune response. Then that food will cause recurring problems long term. That's why it's very important to keep a food diary and regularly review it to see if you can catch what's going wrong. It's amazing to see the number of easily avoidable problems if you just pay attention. And you may be thinking, so what are some of these problem foods for allergies? Now, like I said earlier, everybody's different, but this research article from a few years ago shows an altered intestinal environment is closely associated with the inflammation seen in allergies. Now, you shouldn't be surprised by this considering around 70 to 80% of your immune system is contained in your gut. So when you have an immune disease, such as allergies, you need to look at what's wrong in your intestines. Some food, when it's not broken down properly, can trigger a strong immune response. Frequently, inflammation starts in the intestine. So to heal inflammation, you also need to heal the gut. Before we discuss how to start doing that, if you're serious about healing the gut for allergies and achieve results fast, check out a free training that I put together where I walk you through the specific strategies that have helped my clients with allergies achieve healthy success within six weeks. You can access it at the link below the video and I know it'll help you so much. The link takes you to a page where you enter in your email to receive free training on how to reverse allergies. Everything you need to know is there including a free guide with specific dietary recommendations and tons of helpful case studies of people just like you who reverse their conditions for good and are now healthy. The case studies are valuable because you can see how real people with inflammation were able to improve their condition by just making some small changes. The training comes with a complete actionable game plan for how you can do this at home. Just enter in your email at the top of the page and get started. Now, let's discuss what foods to avoid. I recorded this video earlier and it discusses how the immune system can be triggered by certain complex proteins. We eat protein in our diets. It can come from a variety of sources, both plant and animal. A protein is basically a bunch of amino acids connected together. When the protein enters our digestive system, enzymes in our intestine break up these into individual components called amino acids, which then get absorbed. These intestinal enzymes are called proteases. And the reason this is relevant is sometimes the proteases don't get the job done and we're left with large particles of protein that linger in our intestines and bloodstream for long periods of time. Why does this happen? Well, certain types of protein are hard to break down. Also, there may not be enough protease to break down the proteins. Protease enzymes are produced by our bodies, but can also be found in many types of plants. As you already know, the gut is just one big giant immune organ. 
So these incompletely digested proteins register as a foreign threat and generate an immune response. Basically, the body thinks it's under attack by these large undigested proteins. So then it secretes a bunch of immune chemicals which cause inflammation, and that can be a problem. Let me give you some examples. Bovine serum antibodies and autoimmune disease. There are some very famous studies that looked into this. The human body's response to beef and cow's milk. In many people, the serum protein from cows is not broken down completely, and folks end up with antibodies. These antibodies are 10 times more common in immune disease. Casein and whey. Many folks cannot break down the casein in milk protein. Some people also have a difficulty with the whey itself. If you're dealing with an immune inflammation, it's best to avoid casein altogether, and probably also most whey products. This includes dairy milk and cheese. Also, check your protein powder to make sure it's not causing you problems. I prefer a plant-based protein, but if you decide to use whey, I would recommend a whey isolate, not a whey concentrate, which contains small amounts of casein in it. There's some person-to-person -person variation on this, so if you're just starting off, it's best to avoid this altogether. But once you've mastered the process, you'll be able to see how things evolve. There is a type of casein called A2, that's a bit easier to digest, but it's hard to find, and you have to specifically look for cow's milk that's A2. I'll post a link in the notes section about this. Gluten. This one is very famous because it's estimated that nearly a third of the population has an issue with this. And I think it might be a multifactorial problem. I'll post a link to an article I wrote on the topic, but to summarize, I tell most folks to limit their contact with gluten-containing products in general. This includes anything to do with wheat flour. Egg protein. This one is a tough one because many people who give up meat rely on eggs as a source of protein. Some nutritionists would disagree with me on this and I'll again post a link to help clarify this topic since there's a lot of misinformation. The data from several studies show that egg protein can trigger a strong immune response in the body, specifically in folks with immune inflammatory disorders, but not in every person. My suggestion is to cut this out for a few months or just a little while to see if it makes an overall difference. Egg whites can sometimes be reintroduced when the time is right. And I want to be clear, I'm not saying that these foods are bad. What I'm saying is when you're trying to decrease inflammation in the body and you intend to do it really quickly, the best thing to do is to limit these types of proteins in the diet short term. It's also very important to consider taking a protease enzyme supplement with your largest meal. You can also get protease from plant sources. Here's a list of foods with protease in them. Sprouts and microgreens probably have the highest concentration. Others include asparagus, buckwheat, Japanese pagoda, avocado, papaya, pineapple, cucumber, garlic, coconut, flaxseed, spirulina, figs, chlorella, ginger root, and aloe vera. Plants contain enzymes which help break up protein. Large undigested protein provoke an unwanted immune response in our gut, so the more that they're broken down by enzymes, the better. The enzymes that digest proteins are known as proteases, and plants produce proteases to help with fruit ripening and seedling growth. We use them, obviously, to stay healthy. The names of these enzymes include serapeptase, natokinase, catalase, bromelain, and papain. These are just examples. In our diet, we hardly get enough of these unless we're eating a ton of microgreens or sprouts, which is why you should consider taking a protease supplement if you have immune inflammation. Next in this category of enzymes is coenzyme Q10, which is found in green and leafy vegetables. But you can also get this from a supplement. I hope you're starting to notice a trend here. Green and leafy vegetables hold a lot of value here across multiple phytocategories. So do seeds, and sprouts, and herbs, and spices. The trouble I find is that it's hard to get a substantial amount of enzyme from everyday food, so a lot of folks just take supplements to help with this. Again, not all protease supplements are created equal, and you have to be sure that the enzymes you're ordering have confirmed activity across a variety of pH environments, because your stomach is acidic, your small bowel is alkaline, and your blood is neutral to slightly basic. So ideally, you need an enzyme blend that functions across all three. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, I wanna know, what types of food trigger your symptoms? And have you tried avoiding them? I know everybody's different, but what works for some people may also work for others. 
let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, help support my channel by sharing this with some of your fellow loved ones and be sure to subscribe for more useful tips on allergies. You can also follow me on social at DossierMD. As always, this is Dr. Chanu Dossier with the Mind Gun Immunity Clinic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.